Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. Um, I'm answering a question now from uh, the textbook from the International A-Level Pearson's at Excel publisher. This is uh, the International A-Level book for Pure Mathematics P1. And this is uh, from chapter 6, which is about trig ratios. Page 130, this chapter review, a question number 7. And here uh, we're told that there are three points A, B, and C with coordinates A, B, and C given 0, 1, 3, 4, 1, 3 respectively. They are joined to form a triangle. So we've got to show that the cosine of the angle ACB is minus 4 over 5, and we've got to calculate the area of the triangle ABC. All right, so now for this question here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw like a pair of axes just to make uh, things a bit more clearer. So I'm going to just draw a pair of axes. It looks like we only have to worry about the positive side because... All of these are positive values, so I'll just, it's my origin, that's why. It's just a, it's a little sketch, it's not really that accurate, we're going to make it. So 0, 1, let's say this is 0, 1, and 3, 4, 3, 4, somewhere up here. So this is B, and this is A, A, 0, 1, okay. And then C, it says 1, 3, 1, 3, somewhere over here, let's say. Say okay, that's 1, 3, that's C. It's not to scale, it's just a little sketch to give us an idea. So that's one, let's say that's three. Okay, so we have this triangle that looks something like this. Okay, this is just a little rough sketch of this triangle. Okay, so they're asking us to find the angle. It will show that cosine of the angle ACB, which is this angle here, is minus four fifths. Let's call this angle theta. We want to find what the we want to find show that the cosine of the angle is minus four fifths. Now, what we have is we have these three um, coordinates of the three points that make up this triangle. So what we could do is we could actually use the length formula. I know that there's a cosine rule to find an angle. We can say cosine of the angle A is b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc. If you know the length of all the sides of a triangle, you can find the angle, any one of the angles you want. So here we're going to be finding um, this angle. So the a in this formula is the side opposite that. Okay, and the b and c are the two sides that make the angle. So if I find the length of these three sides, I can therefore find the um, cosine of this angle. All right, so now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's, let's start with a, b. I'm going to find the length of the line AB. From A to B, it's going to be using the, the length formula, the change in X, which is 3 minus 0, which is going to be 3 squared, plus the change in Y, which is 4 minus 1, which is also 3, so that's 3 squared. So that's 3 squared plus 3 squared. Okay, let me just do something here. Okay, 3 squared plus 3 squared, that's going to be 9 plus 9, that's 18, the square root of 18. And we know the square root of 18 is 3 root 2. 3 root 2, because um, that's going to be 9 times 2. All right, so that's AB. All right, then we can find the length of um, AC. The length of AC, this length here. Now, again, you're going to have here 1 minus 0, which is 1, so that's 1 squared. 3 minus 1, which is 2, plus 2 squared. So the square root of 4 plus 1, 5, that's root 5. That's simplest term form. And then we're going to have BC, the length of BC, which is this length here. So we're going to have 3 minus 1, which is 2, so it's 2 squared, plus 4 minus 3, which again is 1 squared. So that's also root 5. So it looks like it's an isosceles triangle. This is 3 root 2. This is root 5, and this is root 5. It's actually an isosceles triangle. So... Probably the simplest way to deal with the angle, we could say the cosine of the angle we're looking for, theta, is equal to b squared plus c squared, which is root 5 squared. I'll, I'll write the, the steps here, but I know that's going to become 5 and 5. Root 5 squared plus root 5 squared minus 3 root 2 squared, okay, over 2 times root 5 times root 5. Okay, so this will give us our answer. So cosine of theta is going to be, that's going to be 5 plus 5, which is 10 minus, that's 18, okay, because when you square 3, you get 9 squared, two, root 2, you're going to get 2, so that's 10 minus 18 over 2 times 5 times 5, 2 times root 5 times root 5, now root, time, root 5 multiplied by itself is 5, so 2 times 5 is 10, 
So we're left with minus 8 over 10. Therefore, we can say the cosine of the angle we're looking for is minus 4 fifths, as we had to show. So there's part 1 answered. And part A. Okay, then it says calculate the area of the triangle ABC. Now we know the area of a triangle can be found in a few different ways. One of the easiest ways is using the formula half A, B, sine C, where this is the angle between the two sides that we know. Now, the angle we know is the angle A, well, we don't know the angle, we know the cosine of the angle, A, C, B, right? And we know the two sides that make it are root 5 and root 5. So, basically, it's going to be, in this case, it's going to be a half times A times B, or half times root 5 times root 5, I should say. So this will be a half times root 5 times root 5 times the sine of theta. Now, we know that the cosine of theta is equal to minus 4 fifths. Now, if you were to try to um, think about the quadrant that this is in, there's different ways we can find out what the sine of theta is uh, using this. Uh, one of them is using identities, which doesn't really come until P2. So this is something which requires a bit of knowledge maybe from P2, but it's doable without it. So we know that the angle, the cosine of the th of theta is minus 4 fifths. So we know for sure the cosine of the angle is going to be an obtuse angle. It's not acute, it's obtuse. So it's going to be in this quadrant over here somewhere. Again, this is something which requires a bit of knowledge from P2, really. Um, and that angle here is, th is theta, and we're going to call this alpha, the associated acute angle. All right. Now... We know that the cosine of this angle is 4 fifths, or negative 4 fifths. So the adjacent is 4, and the hypotenuse is 5. All right, the adjacent is 4, and the hypotenuse is 5. Okay, so if we think about this as a right angle triangle, we can find this side here, which is opposite, by using Pythagoras, which is going to be 3, 4, 5. It's going to be 3, because 5 squared minus 4 squared is 25 minus 16, which is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. By Pythagoras, you can work out that this length is 3. Therefore, we can say the sine of this angle, theta, okay, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths. And it's going to be positive value because um, it's going to be a positive value because it's in the second quadrant where the sine is positive as well. An angle like, um, you know, this 180 minus an angle gives you the same sine. Um, the sine of 180 minus an angle is the same value as the sine of the angle itself. For example, the sine of 30 is equal to the sine of 180 minus 30. That's one of the things we do know in, in P1. So that means the sine of the angle theta is 3 fifths. So this is going to be a half times 5 times 5, which is 5, times the sine of theta, which is 3 fifths. The 5's cancel, you're left with 3 over 2. So the area is 3 over 2 square units, 1.5 or 3 over square three over two square units and there's the answer to part b of this question all right now the student who asked me to answer this question also asked me to answer question number eight as well from the same um, exercise so i'm just going to do that in the same video so this is question number eight also it says the longest side of a triangle has length 2x minus 1 the other sides have length x minus 1 and x plus 1 given that the largest angle is 120 degrees calculate the value of x all right, so we have a triangle. It says the longest side is 2x minus 1. And the other sides are x minus 1 and x plus 1. So say this is x minus 1. That's going to be shorter than x plus 1, which would be longer because it's one less than x. That's one more than x. So um, this is x minus 1. This is x plus 1. And this is the longest side, as I said, 2x minus 1. And the largest angle is 120. So this angle is 120 degrees. Of course, the largest angle is always opposite the longest side. So we got to work out the value of x. So we can link these again together using the cosine rule. I can say that um, this side, which is the side, if we use the cosine rule in this form, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. These are opposites. So I, as I know this angle, 120 then I'm going to use this as my a and the other two as my b and c so I'm going to say 2x minus 1 all squared a squared equals b squared which is x minus 1 squared plus a squared which is x plus 1 squared now we don't have to it doesn't matter which way around you write those it doesn't make any difference but that must be your a here this is opposite the angle we have minus 2 times x minus 1 times x plus 1 times the cosine of 120 degrees 
Right now, I know the cosine of 120 is negative a half. Right, so this is going to give me 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And this is going to give me x squared minus 2x plus 1. And this is going to give me x squared plus 2x plus 1. And I'm going to have minus, well, this is going to give you a half, minus a half. So it will be plus, when this cancels with that, you're going to get plus and the 2 will cancel out. So I'll, be, I'll, have, I'll end up with plus and I'll have x squared um, minus 1. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. In fact, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it step by step for those of you who might not understand. Okay, I'll just write this as, this is minus 2 times, I'll have x minus 1 times x plus 1 times minus a half. Okay, so I'll just do it step by step. So this is 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals, I have x squared plus x squared, which is 2x squared, minus 2x plus 2x, which cancels out, plus 1, plus another one, which is plus 2, minus, now this cancels with this, it's going to give you plus, okay, so I'll have x, I've, I've already um, I've already put them together, so I have minus, and I'm going to have, that's going to be plus x minus 1 times x plus 1, right, so I have 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 2x squared plus 2 plus x squared minus 1, a difference of squares, the middle term will disappear, so I'm almost there now so I have 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals that's 3x squared plus 1 so if we bring everything on one side I'm going to have 4x squared minus 3x squared which is x squared minus 4x and that's going to be a 0 because I have to uh, no yeah 0 equals 0 so I have x times x minus 4 equals 0 so either x equals 0 which is not possible otherwise you'll have um, actually is it possible yeah, it will be impossible because that will give you a negative value there and there. Or x equals 4. Okay, so it says find the value of x. So it says a value, so there's not more than one possibility. So that's 4. In which case, this is now going to become 3. And this is going to become 5. And this is going to be 2 times 4 minus 1, which is 9. So those are the actual lengths now. So then it says find the area of the triangle. So part B, we use that same formula. The area is is equal to a half times a b sine c so here our two sides that we know which make the angle are three and five so it's a half times three times five times a sine of 120 so it's a half times three times five times a sine of 120 degrees now the sine of 120 is equal to the sine of 60 okay well 80 minus 20 that's root three over two so you have a equals that's a 15 over 2 times root 3 over 2. So you're going to have 15 times root 3 over 4. Okay, square units. Now it says in the beginning of the question, it says give non-exact answers to 3SF. Um, this question didn't say anything different. So I'm going to write this to 3SF. So I have 15 times root 3 divided by 4 which gives us 6.495 6.495 dot 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 so you can say 6.50 um, square units we don't know if it's centimeters or not so square units I don't have to put the square there I've already written it there okay so there we have the answer to number 8 okay so it's again using the cosine rule and the sine rule and, and using the area of the triangle formula um, no, nothing really too difficult. This is kind of, I'd say, IGCSE level. But one of the students did ask me to answer this, so I answered it for him. Um, over here as well, nothing really too difficult. We could, I mean, a lot of students would find out what the angle is, inverse cosine of minus four-fifths, and then say the sine of that angle is equal to. Uh, but it might not come out as an exact answer in the end. Um, you know, so, I mean, it's good to get used to if you... If you don't have to find the actual angle, you just care about the sign of the angle, using this technique is going to be useful, especially also when you get to M1 mechanics, you'll notice that this is something which helps a lot to give exact answers. All right, so there we have the answer to number seven and number eight from this exercise six from trig ratios. Student was asking me to answer those questions for him, so they're done. Other questions from this particular um, chapter of P1, chapter six, um, from this um, LXL book, 
um, as I answer them, other questions will be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions which are from the topic of trig ratios from P1 can be found in the playlist in this area over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.